In this video, we'll take a look at the Cisco IP Phone 3 PCC. We're going to look at some of the troubleshooting resources you have available that are natively built into the phone. This does assume that the phone itself is not registered um, yet to a service such as WebEx Calling. And the reason I state that is typically once a phone registers to WebEx Calling, the web GUI is locked as far as the admin account. So the assumption here is we have a brand new phone. We're troubleshooting um, some type of issue. In this case, the phone does not have an issue, but I'm just illustrating the tools that the phone has natively that may help you with the troubleshooting efforts. We're going to focus on the PCAP function the phone has for generating Wireshark captures within the phone itself, which is very nice. Also, the PRT function, the problem report tool function, and how do we set it to debug before we generate the PRT. We're also going to take a look at the syslog function, and that's also very nice. We can actually um, go ahead and use a PC for the phone to send different levels of logging to the PC so we can record what happens before, during, and after the event. So the first thing we want to take a look at here is where the phone itself, we can hit the settings or the gear button. We're going to get the following menu. We want to go down to the status option in the menu, and then we're going to go under network status, and then we want to go under IPv4 status. And then this will be the IP address we want to web into the phone, so 192.168.1.42. And then once we web into the phone, we'll take a look at the options. Okay, we're going to go ahead and log into the phone itself. Okay, we're going to go ahead and click on Admin. We're going to click on Advanced. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the tools that the phone offers natively for troubleshooting. So one of the things um, that can be very useful is there's actually an option here to generate a PRT. However, what is recommended before you generate a PRT, so let's say there's a problem that occurred, such as registering the phone, to a service, perhaps WebEx calling, or perhaps a third-party SIP server or a cloud server, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You would want to record the time and date when the issue occurred, but also we want to enable debug level for the actual phone itself. So if we go here under voice system and we do a search for level, and you notice right now that by default the level is set to notice. We want to go ahead and set that to debug. And then we're going to go back to the debug info tab. We're going to go ahead and click on generate PRT. And then it's going to basically ask us the date of the problem, the time of the problem, I'm going to leave it as is, but you would definitely want to adjust this to indicate the date and time of the issue. And then also you can select one of these, for example, phone registration failure. We'll use that as an example. If you don't find what you need, you can select other. In this case, we'll leave that. We'll hit submit. And this may take 10, 20, 30 seconds, sometimes a little bit longer. Okay, so this was actually quite quick. Uh, this phone actually is not registered to anything, so there's really no information. But any case, so when you download this, you want to download the right-hand side PRT file. You do not need a mini PRT. So what you want to download is the PRT file. You click on it and download it. The other option, which is very nice, is you can start actually a packet capture from the phone. So basically, let's say you're having issues with the phone registering or some other type of issue. Perhaps the phone is not getting the right DHCP IP address, or you had to statically configure the phone with a static IP address. Again, perhaps you know it's not negotiating with the switch, not latching to the right VLAN, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can go ahead and start a packet capture. It gives us an option for filter. If we want to capture all packets, we just want to filter on specific IP address. Typically, if we're troubleshooting 
And we know there's not other interference traffic occurring in a network segment like high levels of broadcast and or multicast and or IGMP snooping is, is missing or not misconfigured, et cetera, et cetera. I would just typically do all packets if we know those are not issues. If those are issues, then you can filter. Um, obviously, having high levels of broadcast in a network segment is a problem in itself. Same thing with multicast. You want to control the via IGMP snooping and then per network VLAN or segment, if you will, you need an appropriate IGMP snooping query to be able to intelligently control what network ports and multicast traffic gets to, etc., etc. But we're going to leave this to all. We're going to submit. And it's actually capturing right now the packets. There is a finite amount of information uh, since the phone is a small device. So this is something really designed to be more practical. I'll go ahead and stop the capture right now versus it being really a heavy lifting packet capture uh, type of tool. If you need to do heavy lifting packet captures, you definitely want a dedicated PC. You want to do port mirroring on a switch port that the phone plugs into. And then basically you want to go in and start the packet capture if possible before the issue occurs. Let it go through the issue cycle and then stop it after the issue. If the issue is sporadic and or random, unpredictable, if you will, I do have another video I created on how to configure ring buffer within Wireshark, which is nice in the sense you can leave it running 24 by 7 until the issue occurs, and then you can simply stop the Wireshark capture and have recorded information before, during, and after. But in any case, so right now we have our packet capture we can download and inspect with Wireshark, which is really nice. Okay, next thing we're going to take a look at is going to be under Voice Tab System. And we're going to go a tad towards the bottom here. And there's a section here for optional network configuration. And um, one of the things that's very useful is most manageable equipment, business class, um, enterprise class service provider equipment typically offers a syslog server function. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to tell the phone to send syslog messages to this PC. The PC itself I'm running a simple application called TFTPD64. It actually has a syslog option. If you notice the PC is binding to IP address 192.168.1.33. So we're going to go ahead and enter that in as our syslog server. Okay, we're going to keep a debug level. Okay, syslog identifier. Um, this one we can we can use MAC address. That's fine. And we can here also type in CP8832-3 PCC. But generally, we should be in good shape here. Also note that if you are having issues with onboarding a phone or provisioning it, time synchronization also is a critical element. So that may be one of the variables you may want to analyze, especially in the PRT file we talked about earlier, to make sure that the phone is getting synced up to an NTP server and the time's correct, date time is correct, because that can cause issues. In any case, let's go ahead and submit this. And let me bring up the actual TFTP app. So if you notice, it's pumped out quite a lot of information here just in a few seconds that we've had it running. So I'm just going to, let me actually resize this here a little bit larger so we can take a look at it. So what the idea here is, is if you're having some type of issue with a phone, assuming you still have web access to the phone, you can have the phone constantly sending syslog information to local PC, and then you can figure out what is happening right before the issue event, during the issue event, and perhaps whatever it might be to remedy the issue event. If you have to reboot the phone, if you have to unplug the cable, plug it back in, etc., etc. And this concept, again, applies to a lot of equipment. It's not exclusive to phones. Uh, pretty much any uh, business class or enterprise class, again, also applies to service provider equipment. 
um, typically will have a syslog functionality. So again, this is really good technique if the problem is intermittent and you may want to combine this in combination of also maybe doing a Wireshark capture, et cetera, et cetera, to kind of detect what is happening right before the issue occurs, during the issue event, and after the issue event. And one other thing I should point out here is if you want to record this out, because right now this is just kind of listing it in a page, but if you want to record this out actually to a file on a PC, you would want to go under Settings, and then basically once you're under Settings, Syslog, and then Enable Save Syslog Messages, and then this will actually save this to your local PC. So we can hit OK right there. And then, as you noticed here, it's it's obviously sending a lot of information. Sometimes debug level may be too much because this file can grow very, very quickly. So this is something you may want to evaluate what level is a level that's not going to overwhelm or the file won't get too big on a PC site. Um, the other thing we can take a look at is network statistics. As you imagine, this has a common statistics you would see like on a switch port. Um, so we have transmit frames, transmit multicast, receive frames, receive multicast, broadcast, unicast, uh, receive broadcast. Generally, when it comes to multicast and broadcast, unless you're doing something specific, generally you shouldn't be seeing more than maybe a few hits per second on the broadcast. And with multicast, if you are actually running applications um, that are using multicast, like Pro Audio, Pro Video, also uh, Music on Hold, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, generally you would want to implement IGMP snooping, making sure the switches in that respective VLAN are doing IGMP snooping. One of the switches will be configured as the IGMP snooping query, and what that does is it intelligently prunes the multicast traffic. So only the multicast group will reach the switch ports where the respective devices that subscribe to that multicast group need to receive it. So it's now flooding the entire switch regarding any switch port that has that's part of that VLAN that's getting the multicast traffic because that would not be scalable. And likewise, sometimes what you may run into is on broadcast, sometimes you may see this number really jumping up wildly as far as broadcast and what it could be is there could be a uh, application that's misconfigured that's pointing to a phantom server or phantom gateway or something like that and it's just retrying 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 and to make matters worse if you have multiple devices in the same situation broadcast can get out of hand and that can cause a lot of havoc on a network so some basic things to look at if we take a look at the network port statistics here and again, pretty much what you would expect from kind of a, a standard switch if you're analyzing statistics, receive drop packets, uh, receive oversight, oversized packets, jabbers, FCS errors, uh, symbol errors, um, also CDP neighbor device ID, CDP neighbor port, LDP neighbor IP address, LDP neighbor device ID, so and CDP neighbor IP. So this makes it really easy if you're trying to locate devices in the network from a troubleshooting standpoint. And then um, if we look at download statistics, so this kind of shows uh, this I do not have provisioned right now in WebEx calling or with another server. So some of the errors you're seeing here is fine because uh, this one I'm just kind of doing some testing, experimenting. But normally you you would see statistics here indicating that you know it's been uh, firmware has upgraded because generally if this will be a device you're just deploying most likely the firmware the device ships with will be older firmware and one of the first things you want to do is you want to update the firmware because generally uh, you will see an increased risk of issues if you're trying to onboard or deploy a device with older firmware. You definitely still would want to check with the provider if it's either WebEx calling service or a third party call controller, cloud service if you will, what firmware they have qualified for their platform because they may have a very specific version but generally you do not want to run a very old version because that in itself is going to give you a higher risk of running into issues. And then we already looked at the debug information. You can click on the messages here 
and it will give you additional messages. You can scroll through. Obviously, there's a lot of information here. So typically, what I do is I do a screen scrape, you know, control A, copy all of this, and I typically will bring up a notepad and then paste it in notepad. Uh, notepad++ actually is very convenient. You can do a control F, and you can do keyword searches in it, um, era, fail, uh, SIP register, NTP, different keywords of whatever specific item you're focused on regarding uh, whatever you're troubleshooting. You can also uh, focus on specific time sections here. Obviously, everything's time stamped in. You know, obviously, you would want to make sure the phone is accurate time and date so that doesn't throw you off. And so we're back on the status page. So this is the name of the unit, the current IP address, the default gateway, pretty much standard stuff that you would assume to be able to view. Uh, provisioning information, firmware load. So as I mentioned, we want to make sure that the firmware is not old firmware, that it's updated firmware. As the recording of this video, 1136, listed here as 11-3-6, MPP is the latest firmware. This is, by the way, what WebEx calling is using as a recording of this video. You have the serial number here, which I blurred out for obvious reasons. Uh, likewise, the MAC address here, hardware version. And let me see if there's anything else that we need to look at. There's also call history, but in this case, this phone has not been provisioned. So obviously this is empty. Missed calls, received calls, placed calls, personal direct. Um, by the way, one question that might come up is, can I log in as administrator if the phone is registered to WebEx calling? And the answer is no. The phone gets locked. The um, WebEx calling uh, has a machine generated password that locks the phone. So from that point on, you don't have admin access. However, there is an option within WebEx Control Hub where you can enable user level access and then log into the phone. And where that's really useful is when we're doing the debugging and we're going to generate the PRT. I do have another video I'll link in the description. But um, it's something definitely if you're troubleshooting, you do want to enable user level access for that respective phone if it's registered to WebEx calling. And then also within Control Hub, you can enable the logging to be debug level. So those are the two key items that you want to enable on it. But in general, those are the key items. So just to summarize, you can generate a PRT. We want to make sure it's debug level, which I showed earlier. Once you do that, it may take 20, 30 seconds. You want to download the right-hand side PRT file. Normally, you want to provide the PRT file for analysis to either a Cisco partner and or if you're working with Cisco TAC directly, Cisco TAC, so they can analyze what the situation is. Uh, again, please, uh, you want to make sure that you document or timestamp when did the issue occur, so the date and time that the issue occurred, because that's really critical. So the uh, tech support folks can kind of focus in a specific segment of the logging when, when the issue occurred. And then we talked about the packet capturing capability here, and then also the syslog. So let me bring up the TFTP server here. So he's, he's continued to capture here. Um, I'm also going to leave a link for the TFTPD64, so Trivial File Transfer Protocol, uh, Damien64, if you will. Um, this is a free application. Typically, the one I like to run is the... Um, zip version because it does not install anything it's just a runtime executable so when you finish you can basically close the application and, and you're done with it so for example i can just close at this point of time and i'm done with it and um that should be it the only other thing i should mention that notice that i'm under advanced and also i'm logged in as admin when you're logged in as admin it's it does list user login this would be if i would want to log back in as user so now it kind of kicks us out. And if we look at some of the items actually in the voice here, notice there, the tabs are much less. So let me go ahead and log in as admin. And let me also do advanced. So we're now admin, even though it says user login, we're admin, we're advanced. And if we go to voice, you'll notice all these other tabs. So definitely when you're troubleshooting or doing something critical, we want to be logged in as administrator advanced. Thank you very much for viewing this video. Hopefully it helps you. Thank you.